Hey guys, so today I wanted to go over a few more things on the EG4 18K PV. So first off, I'll go into the settings that I'm using off-grid. The menu, when you first get into it, may look a little intimidating. Uh, there's actually a lot of options, different thresholds you can set for grid assist and stuff like that. Uh, but it's not bad. I, I actually do better when I get into a menu and I'm able to navigate it through myself rather than read about it. So it wasn't bad at all once I got into it. I'll also do some load testing and just discuss my thoughts how it's been the last few weeks running off grid with this inverter. Anyway, let's get started. So it always feels funny recording another screen, <laughs> but as you guys can see, I have a lot of production and consumption through the unit already. So if you look at the bottom while I have you guys here, that is the total wattage being used right now. I asked EG4 if there were a way that we could see what each leg is using or producing. And they said it would be possible. They actually like the idea and they're working on it now. So that's really exciting for me. That is a uh, very helpful option to have because you can balance your load panel a lot easier if you're off grid and even on grid, you wanna know what each leg is pulling. So. I have most of my loads balanced already because I was using the 6500 inverters. But yeah, the more detail, the better. So I don't know whether it's gonna be on the app or the main menu, but I think that'll be really cool, a, a cool addition. So basic is pretty simple. I have it on zero export. I am not exporting anything. If you guys saw the main menu, it's still on zero. There is more options here in charge. So obviously you can, there's state of charge up here or voltage. Right now I'm running an open loop, so I'm using voltage. And then of course all your battery settings down below. There's also the times. You can do time charging, times AC charging, lots of different options in here. I have it set to lead acid and I have my float voltage there. In discharge I have it reading battery voltage and force discharge. So in advance, I have it on off-grid output and run without grid. I actually think it's pretty cool that you can change the direction to the CT just in case you mess that up. That's pretty neat. And then if you scroll down here, you can, uh, I have it set, my battery capacity is set there too. And that's basically it. That's basically all my settings. But as you can see, like I said before, lots of different grid options in there too. So now I'm going to get the inverter up to around 9,500 watts and then turn on the well pump, three quarter horse well pump. So we're going to do the ovens right now, give myself a nice consistent load and then we'll switch the well on. That's perfect. We're at 9,400. So now that we're at 9,400, let's do the well, go in and switch to 20 amp. And three. did just fine. I wish I had enough 120 equipment to do the entire thing on one leg, but instead I'm going to start out with the oven and then run that one leg the rest of the way up. So that's the oven. Got the one leg up to 60. See if I can do a heat gun and get it the rest of the way. Seventy one amps on one leg. And fourteen on the other. That is pretty impressive. So as I wrap things up, I just wanted to go over some thoughts on the inverter having used it for the last few weeks off grid. It's handled our household really well between baking, watering the garden, central air units. It's done it all. We still have to be intelligent, of course, about load management. 
we're sort of used to that from our 6500 watt units that we had before this. As far as features, it does have quite a few features we may never use, uh, but that doesn't bother me at all. I, to me, I kind of look at it like a smartphone. If you buy a quality piece of equipment, it often has different features that uh, don't really apply to you. So you may just use talk and text or email, uh, but it may be capable of a lot more. As a matter of fact, with smartphones, there's a bunch of features. I don't even know what they are, but they're there if you do need them. That reminds me of the monitoring app on this unit. I love being able to look and see that the unit's okay when I'm not at the house, but I'm not big into looking at all the different graphs and PV production every day. That's, that's sort of a personal preference. A lot of people love it. Uh, they they want to see how much it's producing every day, if everything's doing great. Uh, that starts to make my eyes blur after a while. I'm it's just not interested, but that's just a preference thing. But it is there if I want to look at it, which I like. So as far as the app is concerned, and this is coming from somebody that is definitely not a tech person, it's easy to navigate and change any settings you need to on there. You shouldn't have any issue at all. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> um, and then firmware updates are actually pretty simple with it also. EG4 can do it for you. You can do it for yourself. You can even do it over Bluetooth, I believe. So yeah, I believe I, to me, it seems like they're trying to make it as convenient as possible. So overall, it's been a really fun unit to test and run the last few weeks, and it's just a solid piece of equipment. So I'll put the link in the description below. Feel free to click on it and check it out. So coming up, I'm going to be uh, mentioning or going into a little bit more on the Wi-Fi and then another option in case people don't have access to Wi-Fi. So yeah, stay tuned, and thanks for watching.